Okay. Having understood the time derivative of uh, the vector, let us say r that we considered earlier, let us use that fact in order to derive the velocity of a particular rigid body. Okay. So, where do we start from? We start from as usual a fixed frame. Okay. So, we will look at the fixed frame. Let us say there is a uh, uh, body at a particular instant of time. Okay. The question we have basically is supposing I know the position of a particular point on the body, I wish to find out what would be the position of another point, any other arbitrary point that lies on the body. Okay. So, I am going to just look at the planar kinematics because that is simpler to understand I, I can use the board to draw. Okay. So, that is pretty simple, this should be R b okay. and what should I call this as? If I have to find out b in terms of a, a becomes a reference, right? so it emanates from a and goes to b. Are you with me? And therefore, if I call this as R, it is R B equal to R A plus R. All these are vector quantities, right? R A plus R is equal to R B. Okay. Remember, we have defined B with respect to A. As you can see, it emanates from A, goes to B, and therefore, this is the position of B with respect to A, okay, an important point to note. Okay. So, I am going to write that over here, R of B with respect to A. Okay. So, we have written relative position of any other point with respect to one of the reference points on the solid. Okay. Having done this, if I have to find out the velocity relationship between these, that should be simple. All I have to do is to, is to take the time derivative of these okay. and that is r dot b equals r dot a plus r dot b with respect to a. Okay. R B is defined with respect to the origin of the frame. R A is defined with respect to this, whereas R B with respect to A is a relative position, all right. And therefore, these two there is no problem with respect to fixed frame. This will be the velocity of B. This will be the velocity of A and this will be the velocity of b with respect to a. Okay. Here is where we have to understand one important thing related to what we have written here okay, and that is this. Let me use the same this is screwdriver. Supposing I rotate it with a point as the as the pivotal point right or if i take this point and rotate it okay let's see what difference it makes as far as rotation itself is concerned okay so let's say i'm going to take a 90 degree rotation with respect to a central point it goes like this all right with respect to an end point if i take like this it goes like this all right. Now, supposing I know in this current position one of those points with respect to a fixed frame and I know there is a rotation that is occurring on this rigid body, every point on this rigid body will be seeing the same rotation. If it is seeing the same rotation, it will also see the same rate of rotation and 
a double rate of rotation all right so we're going to use that fact over here okay so we are looking at this body rotating okay and let's say the axis is perpendicular to this okay we already derived a relationship with respect to doing that particular thing okay so let's make use of that after having written this now the question is what is v of b with with respect to a remember in the earlier exercise we had a b pivoted about a there was a rotation occurring right and we wanted to find out what would be the rate of this rotation here the exercise is similar because given that this point is fixed and there is a rotation occurring i would want to find out the rate of this okay one important observation here is how much is it changing so i have i have a body that is rotating a rigid body that is rotating and i have one point here another point here about which about a it is rotating what would be the change in the magnitude bit of r b with respect to a only the magnitude zero correct what is the other uh, aspect that i should look at change in direction right now when we did that exercise earlier we looked at change in direction alone right change in magnitude the rate of change in magnitude was considered to be zero right we separated magnitude and direction right now we have a situation where we have to look at only the directional change of this vector right so it becomes easy for me i if i know that this is rotating with uh, 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 an angular velocity omega then it is nothing but omega cross so let me uh, write it in the style that we have already written if i have to find out the derivative r dot of b with respect to a it is omega cross r b with respect to a and therefore if i substitute in this i'll get r dot b equals r dot a plus r omega cross r of b with respect to a okay so i have written a relation between two points of the body vb equals va plus omega cross r of b with respect to a okay one step and that's it over All right okay let's complicate it a little bit i want to find out the acceleration okay what should i do naturally if i want to find the acceleration and i'm looking at with respect to the fixed frame then all i have to do is to take the derivative of this particular term as simple as that so let's do that if i take the derivative so let's say a b acceleration of b is nothing but v dot b and that is equal to based on this v dot a plus omega cross r b with respect to a the whole thing the derivative of the whole thing so i'm just putting a, a a sort of line over here on top to represent that i'm taking the entire derivative okay now this implies so v dot b equals v dot a plus what should happen to this i'll have omega dot cross r b with respect to a 
plus omega cross r dot b with respect to a. Looks okay. Okay. What is omega dot? The rate of angular moment, uh, uh, angular velocity is angular acceleration, and therefore this will be acceleration of b can be written as acceleration of a plus. Let me just denote that as alpha angular acceleration cross or b with respect to a plus now you notice that this r dot b with respect to a is revisiting and i know that is equal to omega cross r b with respect to a so i can just substitute over here so i'll get omega cross omega cross r b with respect to a That is it. So, I have a b is given by a at the acceleration at a plus angular acceleration cross r b with respect to a plus angular velocity cross omega cross r b with respect to a. Okay. what is the direction of this and what is the direction of this. If we get an idea, then we are talking a little more sense, all right. Okay. Let us just go back to this. Okay. When I say omega cross r b with respect to a, omega is perpendicular, r b with respect to a is like this, perpendicular and this which means if I draw a line that is perpendicular to this, an axis that is perpendicular to this, this is the direction in which omega cross or b with respect to a should occur. So, the direction of r dot b with respect to a is this, okay. I am just showing the direction, sorry to write this small it is r you agree with me this is perpendicular hmm? now observe this expression what's the direction of omega cross r b with respect to a it is direction of r dot b with respect to a which is perpendicular to omega and r b with respect to a right now i'm taking omega cross this particular this is the velocity here this is the velocity we already know omega cross this will give me what perpendicular to these two but i'm looking at omega cross this and therefore it will be in this direction so this is the direction of omega cross omega cross r b with respect to a you agree with me i am just looking at one component one term in that particular equation right how about this what is the derivative of omega dot the perpendicular direction is not changing at all right so if i have theta dot times n alpha is nothing but theta double dot times n okay so this is the direction along the perpendicular to the board cross rb with respect to a what should i get so it has to be perpendicular to those two and that's how i'll get this and this is alpha cross rb with respect to a are you with me now what do i notice about this particular point if i say see this per, uh, direction it is towards a right it is going to rotate like this so if i draw an arc about this a 
a circle about this A. This seems to be along the radial direction and this seems to be along the tangential direction. So, I am going to call this as A, what shall I call this as T of B with respect to A and this I can call as A n or let us say R, A R is my A R okay, of B with respect to A. So going back to this, I know this is along the tangential direction. So I'm going to call it as a t, and this is going to be along the negative of r direction. So I can call it as a r or a minus r, and therefore acceleration at b is equal to acceleration at a plus a tangential component and a Supposing I know that the body is rotating with a constant angular velocity, immediately alpha do, uh, alpha is 0. Okay. It is like having a, uh, a thread, so I am taking this, so I am just rotating okay, with an angular velocity. What will happen? There will be a centripetal force, centripetal force and therefore this will be holding it in place right now or in other words this acceleration is related to basically that it is trying to tend inward the acceleration is tending to go inward okay later on we'll understand how this translates to a centrifugal force 